In this Torah portion, number 18, Mashputing, Exodus 21 and 1 through verse 24 and 18. In Mashputin, it means ordinance, it means rulings, it means the will of our Father, the guidelines, instructions, the words, it means judgment. As believers, we are under the guidelines of Yah. We are under His instructions. We are under His rulings. And we know we can't do every single commandment. And there is around 613 of them. But we certainly can do 10 of them. We need to do our best with what we got. Do what we can. Chapter 21, verse 1. And now these are the judgments which thou shalt set before them. And then it goes to verse 2. If you buy a, an Hebrew servant, which means a Hebrew slave, six years he shall serve, and in the seventh he shall go out free for nothing. Now verse 2 Israel was set free from slavery. And here Yah is explaining on the treatment of slaves. Yah cares for people. And Yah knows the heart of man. When the people get to the promised land and take it, Yah knows that They'll have slaves. So Yah is making sure they will have the right understanding of slavery. Slavery in Egypt was very oppressive. The same as when it was in our time. But that's not the same slavery here. In Jesus' time, the Roman Empire had six million slaves. Let me give you an example. Some folks look at their jobs as being slaves to their jobs. And maybe they are because without the money that they earn from the job, the bills won't get paid. The family won't get fed. And they won't have health care, which the job provides. So they don't have a choice. And if they have, a, have no protection at the job, the boss can order them to do whatever the boss wants and because they don't want to lose their job they do whatever the boss asks now when a union comes into the job to protect and provide better salary and working standards the working condition improves Folks are still slaves to the job for that's the only source of income, but because of the union, they are treated fairly. So that's the basis of what Yah was trying to teach the people. Now, if you believe in Messiah and recognize that he and he alone is savior god in the flesh then you are a slave to him you are a slave to the will of the father slave to his rulings there's there's no respecter of man with yah all will be treated fairly verse 5 
It says, and if the servant shall plainly say, I love my master, my wife, and my children, I will not go out free. Now this shows a covenant relationship with Yah. Here is an example of how much we are to love him. And we want to serve him with all our hearts, even with the choice to be set free. Verse 6. Then his master shall bring him unto the judges, and he shall also bring him to the door or unto the doorpost, and his master shall bore his ear through with an awl, and he shall serve him forever. Now this is what Jesus did for us. He came alone following the will of the Father, and he gave his life for, uh, for us, his bride. He came and he chose not to leave, but to stay forever. Let's jump to verse 32. It says, If an ox shall push a manservant or a maidservant, he shall give unto their master thirty shackles of silver, and the ox shall be stoned. Thirty silver shackles. That's what a slave was worth. And in Matthew's, 26 verse 14 and 15 you'll see that the chief priest who know who knew Torah he paid 30 silver shackles what a slave was worth and there are legitimate reasons why at that time people were slaves and most, most of the um, time was to help people that were dirt poor or people that could not pay their debts or if they got into trouble and committed a crime against the law. They were treated fairly and they were taught a better life. I want to go to Job chapter 31, verse 13. I'm going to um, read from the complete Jewish Bible. It says, If I ever reject my slave or slave girl's cause when they brought legal actions against me, then what would I do if God stood up? Were he to intervene, what answer could I give? Didn't he who made me in the womb made them too? Didn't the same one shape us both before our birth? So Job was concerned about keeping Torah. So we as believers are blessed by Messiah, but we are blessed or cursed by the works we do, the fruit we show. Let's go to Exodus 21 verse 17. And he that cursed his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. In Matthew's 15, verse 4, our Lord Jesus calls the religious leaders out by breaking this law. And it says in verse 4, For God said, Honor your father and mother, and anyone who curses his father or mother must be put to death. But you say, If anyone says, to his father or mother, I have promised to give to God 
what I might have used to help you. Then he read of his duty to honor his father and mother. Thus, by your traditions, you may know and void the word of God. Then he calls them hypocrites. And he says, yeah, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. I want to jump to Exodus 22:18. It says, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Now this is uh, important for it. It still is happening today. Sorcery is rebellions, rebellion against Yah. Rebellion against Yah's authority. When a person practices sorcery, that person t is teaming up with the enemy and cursing our wonderful creator. We serve a jealous God. So if we need a starting point on what commandments to start with, start with the first four commandments. Work hard to do those four first and then strive to do the others until more can be done. Exodus 22, verse 28. It says, you are not to curse God and you are not to curse a leader of your people. This tells us not to dishonor our leaders don't curse them. You can you can not agree with them, but it it shows us not to curse them or dishonor them. Apostle Paul understood this in Acts chapter 23 verse 5. It says This is um, Paul speaking. He says, "I I wasn't uh, aware brother that he was a the high priest for it is written thou shalt not speak evil of the rulers of thy people Paul followed Torah Exodus 23 verse 4 it says if you come upon your enemy your enemy's ox or donkey Straying, you must return it to him. If you see the donkey which belongs to someone who hates you lying down helpless under its load, you are not to pass him by, but to go and help him free it. Even your enemies are to be treated right. In Luke chapter 10, Verse 30 to 37 is a, an example how, how a stranger, while he was traveling, got hurt, and a stranger helped him instead of those who should have helped him. They just walked by. And Jesus said, who is my neighbor? Those who help and treat me right. Exodus 23 and 20. It says, Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee in the place which I have prepared. I believe this speaks of Messiah. Verse 21, Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. Obey, strive to do Torah until you can do more. Verse 22, but if you shall indeed obey his voice, those are the rewards. And do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thy enemy, and an adversary unto thy adversary. 
strive to do his ordinance. Mash Poutine.